All right, let's just get into it. Um, how are we doing, everybody? So today is the, the last day of our February series on multi-channel outreach, um, <clears throat> which has been which has been good, I think, for, for the first month where we've had a theme like this, it went pretty well. Um, we've had good reviews. People have enjoyed this this uh, monthly theme approach, so we'll continue to do that. I'll let you know what we're doing for, for next month at the end of um, today's Lunch and Learn. Um, but we started off with an overview and did some playbook samples and went through some tools and tactics. And today is really just going to be a walk away with some walk away tips. And um, really, we'll, we'll go through, I'll give you another sample playbook for your multi-channel campaign that you can take um, take away with you after this month. And we'll go through some of the tools that we like and um, you know, very interested in, in hearing your feedback after this to see how we can improve this and um, what we can do to make this more valuable going forward. We are going to be changing the venue of the Lunch and Learns going forward. We actually have um, new software that we're going to invite you all into for, for next month. So you'll be able to get in. We'll have um, tools and, and downloadable PDFs and um, you know, more of an interactive experience on these things going forward. So be prepared for that. We're really excited about it. We've been working on that for a long time behind the scenes, and that's going to be going live um, in March. So if this is your first time on the Lunch and Learn, um, who am I? Why should you care? I run BN Digital. That's our agency focused on business acquisition and sale. It's all we do. It's all I've really done in my career is deal origination. Um, agency came out of that, and we focus exclusively on off-market deal origination for BN Digital. Um, we also have BizNexus. That's our platform for intermediary deals, right? For on-market deal origination. So if you're a search funder or family office, private equity, and you're watching today, that's going to be more relevant for you. Intermediaries, you're pretty much just posting your deals on there and connecting with the buyers. But for this, um, for the purpose of the Lunch and Learn, we pretty much focus on <clears throat> our off-market deal origination philosophy, which is social selling. Um, it's something that hasn't been really um, applied at scale in this industry. Um, I don't know why, because it is extremely effective, especially over time but really we're leveraging everything that's available online to get after your primary prospects, um, i.e. the business owners who you're going after, whether you're trying to acquire a business or if you're an intermediary and, and you're looking for multiple engagements with a certain type of business, either in a geographic area or in a specific target niche, we try to build up your ecosystem of those primary prospects along with the referral prospects who can deliver you your primary prospects on an ongoing basis. And that's going to change a bit you know, with each industry, but in this industry, typically, um, you know, the the financial advisors, the accountants, the lawyers, the you know, the insurance brokers, and you know, niche consultants that will change depending on which industry niche you're going after. But those are the refer referral sources that you need to be thinking about um, on an ongoing basis. How do you get in front of them? How do you let them know what your value prop is? How do you coordinate with them so that they can deliver you your target business owner, your primary prospect, on an ongoing basis? We do this through five stages. Don't worry about this. Um, you know, we have a ton of lunch and learns out there at this point that, that cover each stage of our process. Just know that we do look at this as a long game. Um, there's the outreach stage and then there's the nurture stage, right? And so the outreach stage, in my mind, has to continue. Um, all pistons should be firing for outreach on an ongoing basis, but everybody who you approach should be entered into a system um, for nurturing, right? You have to have a system in place for staying in front of each type of prospect, not just a lump system, but you know, one for, you know, we've been using the HVAC example all month. So if you're going after HVAC business owners, you should have a very specific HVAC owner nurture campaign that you, know, you can stay on them over the next 12 months, however long your, your nurture campaign is. And then another one for the referral prospects. Um, the end goal of everything that we talk about here, um, month, over month, week over week, is to get that proverbial cup of coffee, right? To be able to sit down with a prospect who you have engaged um, online, nurtured, they've seen your social proof, you've defined yourself as a qualified authority in the area of business acquisition and sale, you're staying in front of them, so you get the meeting and hopefully turn that into a real world relationship, if not a real world engagement, if you're an intermediary or if you're looking to buy a business, um, ultimately a transaction. Um, Updates, we go through, we've just been cranking away on, on our update for BizNexus, honestly. <clears throat> um, we've done a lot 
with the agency as well. So everything that we're covering here with multi-channel, it's been nice because we've been implementing so much um, value on, on that front in terms of, of staying multi-channel. So as some of these channels are getting less valuable over time, that's that's kind of the game, right? That's what that's what digital marketing is um, with deal origination. You need to make sure that you're staying on, on all of these channels so that as one channel becomes more valuable, you're on it. As another channel you know, becomes less valuable, you're on it. Over time, the social selling process works regardless of which channels are hot, which ones are not. If you're staying, um, if you have a social selling program in place across multiple channels, that's going to be a process that you can uh, duplicate that's replicable over time and, and will result in long-term success. Um, biznexus.com to get us at uh, our platform for intermediary back deal flow and bn.digital for our off-market deal origination services. So this month we've been covering the um, outreach, right? Multi-channel outreach, that's um, the targeting, the, the building phase of, of our process. And we've really been sticking with this multi-channel theme. This, um, this, this topic this month came from you, right? People were very interested in multi-channel, which channel is best, how do I tie it together? And it also came from us in the sense that this is something that we work a lot on with, with our clients, um, but then with the, the prospects who come through, nine times out of 10, when we're doing an initial analysis on their deal funnel, um, we ask what they're doing across channels and their vendors are just, it, it, it's disjointed, right? Disjointed marketing efforts is a, a very common problem in this industry. Um, and that can cause huge brand damage, but you're missing, you're missing a lot of low hanging fruit if you're not coordinating your campaigns across multiple channels. So don't just have your email person and your social person, and then maybe some ads and not tie it all together. It doesn't make any sense in an industry like this where deal origination is something that is going to take time, especially if you're an intermediary and you're not in this for one acquisition, you want to get multiple engagements over time. You need to build out that deal funnel and need to do that knowing that you know, 99% of these prospects are not going to be ready to talk to you about a business valuation, about an exit on that first approach, right? So you need to get them into that system, a multi-channel system for outreach, for nurturing, so that you can stay in front of them so that when they're ready to have that conversation about a business valuation, about, you know, what their exit options might be, you're front, front and center, right? You're first in line. That's the whole point of this. So multi-channel, um, number one, it allows you to expand your reach, right? Because in business acquisition and sale in particular, you don't know what, what channel is going to be your prospect's preferred channel. Some, you know, some prospects will be active on LinkedIn. Others, others will not. So, you know, if you're using LinkedIn, then hopefully you're getting their, their email, their, their address, you're getting you know, the information somehow for multiple channels. So you can touch them across multiple channels. Cause if they're not on LinkedIn, but maybe, you know, maybe their company is, you can identify them there and then you actually get in touch with them on a different channel. Um, that's very, very common, right? So making sure that you're covering your basis and that your communication is spanning the channels, um, that's, that's where we start with this multi-channel outreach. Um, combined channels are, are much more effective if they're coordinated for staying top of mind with your prospects, for reinforcing your brand, um, you know, your definition as a qualified authority in your specific area in your niche, in your geographic area for business acquisition and sale. Um, you need to make sure that you're making these people comfortable with you over time and that they're seeing you, that they know you're out there. That's how you're going to get that call for, for the first discussion about something that's very sensitive, which is, you know, selling a business that may, maybe your prospect has been running for, for 30 plus years. So that's multi-channel still really baffles me how many people, um, <clears throat> certainly in main street business brokerage, but even middle market, um, you know, you have a lot of these buyout shops who just assume that they're going to, they're going to get the deal because they've raised some capital, you know, staying, um, in front of your prospects in, in an increasingly noisy internet driven world is, is critical, right. And multi-channel having that process in place for whatever reason, this industry is just behind on. So that's why we did that this month. And hopefully what you found, um, has been, been helpful here. Um, so we'll leave you with a, a pretty template multi-channel playbook that, that we like, that we see working in uh, business acquisition and sale. Um, you know, if you can start with LinkedIn, that's great. Um, optional. Some people don't like to, to lead with LinkedIn. Some people like to, to wait until um, someone is really a, a, 
a known contact before they reach out to connect on LinkedIn. But if you can start with a LinkedIn approach and then follow the snail mail flyer, um, there are a couple benefits there, especially if it's you know your image on the snail mail flyer and LinkedIn. If you use the same headshot, then um, that's going to be reinforcement. So if you have gotten into somebody's LinkedIn network and then they're you know rifling through mail in the morning before they start start their day in the office and they see your photo on the snail mail, it's going to be more likely that they actually look at it and and read down. So we like that. Um, leading with LinkedIn, following with a, with a snail mail flyer, and then following up with an email, right? So you can track the LinkedIn. You can't really track the snail mail flyer unless you put some sort of trackable code on there that they'd have to enter um, you know, something. But let's just assume the snail mail flyer, for all intents and purposes, could just wind up in a desk for the next three years. You don't know, right? It could get intercepted by an admin. It could wind up in a desk, could wind up in trash. So following a snail mail flyer with something that is trackable is critical. So something like email using the, the tools that um, we went through and, and that I'll recap on the next slide. Um, sending an email with your value proposition. This is me. I'm looking to buy an HVAC business. Here's my contact info. Obviously more articulate and better converting uh, cold email language than that. But getting your clear value proposition across and using a tool that will allow you to resend that to unopens, right? So if 20, 30% of the people actually open that email, you still got to get the other, you know, 80, 70% who didn't open it. So you want to resend with a different title, same copy, same value prop to make sure that that value prop, your value prop, what you're trying to do is actually getting in front of the eyeballs that, that matter. Um, after you've sent an email, that's where you can drop a call, right? And the call, when we say use data, <clears throat> again, you can have separate calls. So if you're using VAs or if you're using an admin, um, the point of that call should be to set, so let's say if you're, you're an intermediary and you're using a VA or if you're um, a funnel sponsor and you're using a VA, the point of this call, if you're using an admin on these should be to get a demo with you, should be to get you on the line, right? And that call should be broken up between are you calling a cold prospect who has not opened the email and who is not in your LinkedIn network? Or are you calling somebody who has opened the email once and maybe they've accepted to be in your LinkedIn network, but there's been no communication? Or is this somebody who has opened up your email multiple times and maybe there's been some messaging back and forth on LinkedIn or certain engage some engagement on social? Those should be three different calls for your admin, right? But if you use data, you can approach your calls that way and you're going to get much better results because you're not, you're not jumping in blind. You do have that data. Um, after that multi-channel outreach in deal origination turns into more of staying in front of them, right? So it turns into don't burn your brand. Don't pressure them too much. You want to make sure they know who you are. And then you want to stay in front of them by you know, helping to establish yourself as a qualified authority, you know, putting out social proof, um, testimonials, you know, comments, people, who hopefully um, you have helped sell their business, you have had the transaction for somebody who um, is the, the same type of persona as your prospect. So your, your LinkedIn, your posting, your engagement should always, you know, it should be a mix, right? So if you're gonna brag about yourself, you're gonna do a humble brag, maybe one or two for every 10 posts should be that. The rest of the posts should just be about your industry, um, very subtly defining you as a qualified authority if you're posting your own content, you should always have the call to action to reach out in that content so that people can reach out directly so that they'll have a very easy way to get in touch with you if that article is relevant to them in that moment. Um, rolling everyone over into your newsletter, very important. So I recommend touching these prospects on a monthly basis through a newsletter that has you know, the, the call to action to get in touch with you for your free valuation, for a confidential consultation, whatever that may be. Um, with articles and maybe blog posts that, you know, again, help reinforce and establish you as a qualified authority, qualified authority in your niche. That's what a newsletter should be, to remind your prospects, hey, I'm here, this is what I do, and if you want to have a chat, here's a clear way to reach me. And your newsletter should accomplish that month over month um, you know, with a regular cadence. So you know, growth requires consistency, right? Like traction requires consistency. You should set that up so that you're not missing it at least once a month. Um, the webinar has been very effective through COVID. I don't think that's going anywhere. And I think you know, people are just used to going to webinars now, 
right? It's, it's very, it's convenient. You can get a lot out of them. You don't need to go fly for a conference. I mean, I think we're always going to want to do that. I love and miss the, you know, in-person um, interaction, but you know, if, you, if you're learning something webinar, that's pe people are doing that much more now than they were pre-COVID, obviously. So this is a marketing format that if you haven't engaged with yet, I highly recommend it. Um, in business acquisition and sale, it's very easy for you to team up with your referral prospects. So if you're, in a, if you're an intermediary, um, I mean, it's this low hanging fruit, you can just <clears throat> put together five webinars, um, you know, and get a financial advisor for one, get an accountant for other, get an estate planner for another, get, um, you know, insurance broker for another, you're all speaking to the same target prospect, join forces and make sure that the webinar is valuable and that you have an email leading up to the webinar and following up, right? Because the webinar provides a great opportunity for you to get that call, to actually get on the line with your prospect. You can lead into the webinar and ask your prospects if they have any questions that they'd like you, that you'd like them to address or that you'd like, sorry, that they would like you to address during, during the Q&A in the webinar. And then you can try to answer those questions so that you provide the value. And then you can follow up and, you know, ask for, ask for the call, right? Um, you know, ask for feedback, get on the line, chat about, you know, why they attended the webinar and what overlap you have. Great opportunity, great conversion. If you're not using that, you absolutely should. And then what we've also seen really well, especially in the middle market, is just sending out the monthly or um, quarterly white paper, right, with data. So m and Source, IBBA, uh, BizNexus, BizBuySell, get the data, quote it, put it into a white paper, something that clearly establishes you as an authority, send that out to your prospects, make sure it's relevant. And once a quarter is nice. So if you can have something, get a template together, um, get somebody on Upwork to put a nice template together and then just fill the data in once every three months. And that's, that's really helpful, especially if you're trying to go up market. That's something that hits well. Um, so the multi-channel playbook we just went through, this is gonna be a recap of some of the stuff that we covered in, in the last couple of weeks. But just to recap, you know, LinkedIn Sales Navigator, that's the best tool that you can use for LinkedIn. There are other tools out there that will help with LinkedIn automation, but those are no-go with LinkedIn. And LinkedIn, um, you know, it's a, it's a big company, it's a litigious company, it's a smart company. So, um, you know, watch out for things like fly-by-night Chrome extensions that are just gonna get closed down. Um, you know, I recommend you subscribe to Sales Navigator and use it, learn how to use it, use it at scale, you know, find your prospects, nurture your prospects, stay in front of your prospects and throw in comments when, um, you know, LinkedIn, it's, they'll, they'll send, they'll, the notifications are bad, right? They'll notify you to reach out to a prospect when there's been a job change or when something arbitrary has, has happened. They haven't nailed that part yet, but you can, you can fill in the gap. If you're on Sales Navigator and you know that there are some prospects who you want to stay in front of, you can check your Sales Navigator feed and it is a great tool for, for doing that if you're using it. Um, snail mail, we've used tools like lucid press and PS print. Um, very easy, something that will allow you to, um, hopefully automate, right? So you send out a snail mail and you do have automations with the CRM. Then once that snail mail is sent you know, three days later, um, five days later, your email will automatically be sent. So snail mail, there are a ton of options out there. I just recommend you make sure that whatever you're using, um, plays nicely with the CRM that you're using so that you don't have to manually do this with a spreadsheet so that once you hit send on a batch of 300, for example, if you're sending out a snail mail to 300 owners, you know, those 300 people in your CRM are going to be queued up for your multi-channel drip that you set up. Um, and if you want to consult on that, just set up with us. We, we can, uh, we'll, we'll give you our advice. We won't try to give you any pressure cell. We'll just let you know how we do it. And, um, you know, if it's, a, if it's a fit to go with us, obviously we always, we always love taking on clients in this industry, but if it's not, we're out there to provide value. Um, so feel free to schedule a consult if you want to run through that with the automation piece, connecting that to snail mail. Um, email, we love Woodpecker. Um, we like Mailshake. We love, we love Mailshake, but we, we love Woodpecker. We love quick mail. Um, and you'll get this deck with these links. Each one of these links does give you something like 25% off or you know, free, you know, free prospecting. So instead of a hundred, it'll be, you know, up to 500. Honestly, I can't remember. We have deals with pretty much every tool out there at this point, but these tools are our favorite quick mail woodpecker. 
um, from a dev standpoint, those are, are, are very tech oriented founders, dev oriented founders, uh, Mailshake, again, more, more sales oriented founders. So Mailshake is going to be um, user friendly in terms of templates and Woodpecker and QuickMail, I think, um, are, are extremely effective. So I'll let you do the research. You get free free trials with all those with our codes. So try try them, play them. If you have any questions, um, ask us. Social posting, um, Buffer is the free tool that we like. Calling, we use Sales Dialer in our CRM um, that connects really well. It allows us to hear recordings of anybody who is um, calling prospects in areas where you can do that. And then it can do transcripts. And so for us with our sales reps, we um, have 100% visibility using Sales Dialer with our CRM. And then for a newsletter, you know, MailChimp's the, the popular tool. It's not, not fantastic, but for a first step, which you know, I get the feeling most people are really in this at, at, the, at the bottom level. You're just starting out with multi-channel here. Um, a lot of you don't have a newsletter. You've been asking us about the newsletter. If, if you don't have a newsletter, just hop on MailChimp, get their free account, get it going. And then from there, you can graduate to some other tools and we can run through that at another time if, um, if that's something that people are interested in. Just let us know in the, um, in the, in the feedback form after, after this is up. So takeaway tips on multi-channel. Um, again, starting with data, making sure that if you're doing this or if you're using somebody, <clears throat> you're not starting with just emails. You're not starting with just LinkedIn. You're not starting with just a call list. Get the data. It's 2021. You can get that data. You can make sure that before you launch a campaign, you have the ability to coordinate and track across channels. Strongly recommend it. It's going to pay dividends um, going forward for you. If you're not doing it now, you're, you're wasting a lot of time that should be spent on managing transactions. Um, so coordinate those efforts before you begin. Make sure you know what channels you're going to need to go to, to, to reach out on and what messages are going to go out at different stages of the funnel, right? So obviously a, a first message to somebody who you've never approached is going to be very different than a message that you're sending six months after the fact, after they've been exposed to your brand across multiple channels. Um, tracking everything, keeping it in a CRM, you know, our CRM that we like, we have a feature called life of the lead where you can just go in and, and clearly see what emails the person has opened, what they've seen, um, did they, you know, were they sent a snail mail? Um, you know, have they visited any, you know, what pages on the website have they visited? What, um, you know, what key documents have they visited? Anything that we're doing is clearly visible in life of the lead. Whether you're with us or whether you're in your own CRM, that is how it should be set up. When you, when you get a task to call somebody, you should be able to go into that profile and see very clearly what campaigns they've been enrolled in, why they're relevant, you know, are they an HVAC owner, where are they, and what have they been sent, what have they opened, what have they engaged with. So making sure that you track everything, critical part of this process, and, um, you know, making sure that you have those automations set up so that you don't have to do anything, right, so that when you're doing a multi-channel um, outreach campaign, you're not really burdened with this once you hit the launch button. Really, the next thing should be you getting on the phone with the prospect. So that's that for the multi-channel. Please do give us uh, your feedback. Um, we're going to make these things more like classes going forward so that we'll give you very clear um, kind of homework and, and tools and, and steps for implementation. That's something that we've, we, we have heard through feedback. So we're listening. We'll continue to do more of that going forward. And for the March series, um, the, the winner was, uh, referral prospects actually. So people want to know more about actually like implementing strategies for referral prospects. So who are your referral prospects? How do you actually leverage those in, in a valuable way? Um, how do you find them? How do you get in front of them? And what, what are the strategies for, for nurturing them? How do you team up with them? Um, things like the, the webinar that I went through today. So what are the strategies that we see working for leveraging referral prospects? That's what we're going to do in March. So we're really excited about that. We think it's going to be a, a fun one for us to dive into and seems to be something that um, obviously the community is interested in. So we will focus on referral prospects for March. So unless we have any questions, which we never really get, probably because I cut it off more often than not, um, then just feel free to do what you've been doing. Put your questions, put your feedback in when you get the form today, tomorrow. Let us know what you want to do with this, where you want us to take it. Um, what was valuable and what was not. I don't have thin skin. I like negative feedback. So if you have any, please send it to us. We want to make this more valuable for you. So thanks guys. Um, we will see you next week.